The topic is when Jesus came in an empty boat from Luke chapter 5 verse 1 to 11. God has his own way of working his work in our life. Without God coming and working in our life, we can do nothing in and by ourselves. He knows how to find out what is needed for us. In fact, when Jesus asked us to pray, he even said, your heavenly Father knows what you need even before you ask what to pray or what you need. He knows everything about you. Yet, sometimes we don't know how God works in our life. We are so oblivious of the fact that this is happening in my life because God is allowing this to happen to us. So my title today says, When Jesus came in an empty boat from Luke, and let me read before I go into the discussion. One day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the waters as two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they singled their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both the boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the son of Zabdi, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. You see, God has his way of working his plan in an amazing manner. Peter and his companions had worked whole night. Jesus had just begun his ministry in Galilee. He has announced his mission to preach the gospel in a synagogue. And now he is walking along the shores of Galilee. The Sea of Galilee early in the morning appears to be very quiet and calm. It's almost like a huge lake. So it does not have huge waves every time now and then they have, but sometimes it is very cool and calm. So this particular morning it seems as though there were so many people coming to the seashore to buy the fish. But sadly that night the fishermen had caught nothing. They had worked whole night and they caught nothing. And with that dejected mood, the crowd was, I think, also murmuring and grumbling. The fishermen were sad and they, just was, they were just simply cleansing their net. Jesus walks along. He begins to teach the word of God. He begins to preach to them the gospel that he had just announced in the synagogue. And when they heard him preach, so many people began to push around him, push around him so much that it appears as if they would have pushed him into the sea. So knowing the the pressure coming to him, he asked us Peter. There were two boats, but he asked us Peter, can he use his boat? And Peter gladly gave him the empty boat. And he asked Peter, can you please put me a little away from the land so that people do not try to come in the boat? And he began to teach from the boat. While Jesus was teaching, it is possible that Peter was still cleaning his net. Or he was listening. Even though he was listening, maybe there was a sense of faith arising within him, but yet Peter was always a very skeptic, unstable personality. He must be thinking so many things. And Jesus knew what he was thinking. 
even though Jesus was preaching to the crowd, the primary audience at this time appears to be Peter and James and John. He is speaking to the crowd, but his message was intended for these three amazing disciples of Jesus Christ. So he finishes the message and he tells them, now go back little further into the deep. Go a little deep into the deep water and let down your net and with much more astonishment Peter must have looked at him and said you must be kidding. We have walked whole night and we got nothing and there are no fish during the daytime in this time in this area and you are asking me to put down my net. I am afraid to tell you what I think but anyway because you say so, I will let down my net. Because by the time he heard Jesus preach to the crowd, Peter had developed some kind of a reverence towards this great man. So he does not want to disappoint this great teacher by saying, no, 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 get lost, you know nothing about fishing. Who stupid will put his net down in this afternoon? We have just cleansed our net and there's getting dried up we don't want we are, we are getting ready for tomorrow he would have said it but because he had this deep sense of reverence to this great teacher who was teaching with authority he said you said so therefore I will let the net down and a miracle happens the empty boat is filled and Peter's heart is revealed and Peter's life is filled. So with that, I just want to share one or two examples and then conclude. Jesus came preaching the word of God to the crowd, but his primary audience was Peter and James and John. In the same way, God works in our life also in many indirect methods. Sometimes we think, oh, maybe this is not for me, so we let it go. But in reality, God may be calling us through some friend or family or some unknown people or some radio, some television, some newspaper, a book you read, whatever. Whichever way gospel came to you, it is Jesus calling you. Maybe you are not addressed directly in that message, but Jesus' intention is for you. Just like his intention was for Peter, even though he was speaking to the crowd. Gospel comes to us in many different ways. And Peter had the wisdom to respect what Jesus was telling. Peter had the wisdom to honor the man. Because he said, because of your word, I'm going to do what is supposed to be, not to be done. Means that he really respected the message he heard from Jesus and respected the man. And in the same way, in our life, when you hear the gospel in one way or the other, respect, treat Jesus with respect. Treat him with the respect he deserves. Not his enemies also could find one word of insult to put on him when he was brought before the judgment seat. Before setting him to the cross, Pilate said, I find you innocent. No one found an innocent. Only people who blamed Jesus were the ones who were hired to tell lies. Jesus is beautiful. Gospel is beautiful. Gospel has a life-giving power. Gospel has a life-liberating power. Gospel has a hope-giving power. Gospel is sweet and beautiful. Gospel has tremendous ability to provide hope for the hopeless, to provide strength for the weak, to provide wisdom for the foolish. This gospel comes to us in one way or the other. It came to Peter, even though while Jesus was speaking to the crowd. Jesus comes into an empty boat. There were two boats empty. Jesus enters into one of the boats. And Peter allows him to come into his empty boat. So when you hear the gospel, when you hear the message of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the best thing to do would be to let that message come into the emptiness of your life. You may be trying to fill the boat whole night, but you cannot. 
You may be trying to fill the boat throughout the day, but you would not be able to do it. You may be able to you may try to fill that emptiness with many other things, but it is not going to be filled unless Jesus comes into your empty boat. When Jesus came into Peter's empty boat, the both the boats were filled with large number of fish. I can say when a person invites Jesus in his or her personal life, in his or her empty life, in his or her poor life, sad life, miserable life, Jesus has the capacity to transform it into fullness. A poor person can turn into a prosperous person. A sick person can turn into a healthy person. Uh, an ignorant person can become one of the wisest person when he allows Jesus to come and fill the emptiness in his or her life. So here Peter allowed Jesus to come into his empty boat and Jesus filled that empty boat in a miraculous way, in a divine way, in a powerful way, in such a way that the whole people who saw that event were shocked and astonished. When they see your life, once you invite Jesus in your life and allow Jesus to fill your life, when people will see you down the road, they will be astonished. And I, I tell my story to many people nowadays, after 20, 30 years, 30, 32 years now. There were times when one pastor gave me a, a Nike t-shirt but took it back because he told me that that Nike t-shirt was too expensive for a man like me. Then there was same pastor, same church, there was a foreigner who had left a, a Land Rover leather shoe for someone, someone to use before he returned back to his country. So by mistake, and I listened to another friend who said, we were singing carols for the Christmas, it was cold. I had no shoes, I had never worn shoes in my life until that time. I always lived with the broken sandals. And in fact, there were no sandals at that time. I lived a barefooted life for so many years. That day, out of my stupidity and the, the friend who is so famous today, a great singer in the western part of Nepal, same name, he and me, Bozraz Bata. He said, you have no shoes, we are going at night, it is dark, it is cold, why don't you use this, this foreigner who left this shoe? I don't think pastor will mind. This is for anyone who needs. These are given for someone to use. So I put it and Land Rover shoes were very comfortable. When I returned back from the carol singing, I was given one of the worst weeping of the mouth. So I was a man in whose body a Nike t-shirt was too expensive, in whose feet Land Rover shoes were too expensive to put on. But today, my wife always goes and finds a Land Rover shoes for me, but I don't like the Nike t-shirts. Yet those people who mocked at me those days are still listening to me. They will listen this message also. They read my writings and they themselves wonder what happened to this man. We thought he will be dead and gone and we thought that he will never have a chance to tell us what we did to him. But today they are astonished what happened to this man. And that on, on top of that he is speaking into English language. He didn't even know how to speak Nepali language those days. He was from a village who, that he spoke a very local dialect. They are astonished to see a man from village in West Nepal who knew no language, who knew nothing in life, who did not have shoes to put on his feet. Today preaching the gospel to thousands of people, not thousands, hundreds of thousands of people are listening to these online messages. In the same way, if you allow Jesus to come into your empty life and fill you, God will make you a person of astonishment. Peter's people were astonished when they saw Peter ascend to the heights of God's glorious ministry. When Peter, same fisherman that they used to mock and look down maybe upon, when he used to walk in the streets of Jerusalem, his shadow would fall on the sick people and they would be healed. Amazing! 
Amazing. When Peter preached the first message in the day of Pentecost, 3,000 people accepted Christ and he was the first preacher in the history of the church. Astonishing. When you allow Jesus to come into your life, in your empty life, and obey him and follow him the way Peter he left everything it says they took the boats to the shore they left the fish they left the boat they left everything and followed him and Jesus made them amazing disciples of Jesus Christ astonishment came to them in that same way my friend Jesus tells Peter to go a little further that is another beautiful message in itself but my time is up he says take it a little further sometime like Peter, we have to take our life a little further. We have to dig a little deeper. We have to hang a little harder. We have to dig our heels sometimes when going get stuff. When Peter listened to Jesus saying, take a little further, go a little deeper, he obeyed and miracle happened. But many times we give up so easily. We don't want to go a little deeper. We don't want to go a little further. In the 19th century, there was a man called R.U. Darby and his uncle, two men. Napoleon Hill, in his Think and Grow Rich book, talks about this true story. Darby and his uncle, they wanted to dig gold because it was during that time America was going through a gold rush. If you have, if you have watched the movie Gold Rush, you will know it. Everyone was going towards the Wild West in Colorado, all the way to California. They were looking for gold mines. Darby and his uncle found a gold mine in Colorado. And they had no money, so they came back to their state in Maryland and they uh, raised, borrowed money and bought the equipment, began to dig and dig and dig and they found the gold. They found the gold just about... Uh, a little amount and suddenly the, the gold trail began to disappear. They dug and they dug and they dug and they dug. Nothing happened. Finally, tired and disappointed, Darby and his uncle didn't even know what to do with these equipments. Thousands of dollars they had spent to buy those equipments. So they asked a nearby junkyard man if he could buy those equipments. Big, big diggers. So the junkyard man bought with few pennies those that they had spent thousands. So he was happy to buy these huge equipments, but then the junkyard man thought, what am I going to do with these beautiful brand new machineries? The yard man thought, maybe I should try to dig again. But he asked an engineer, a mining engineer, to come and help him. He hired the mining engineer to say, can you tell me exactly whether there is gold or not. The engineer found out the gold was only three feet from where they had left digging. Just three feet. The junkyard man dug three feet, went on to make millions of, do millions of dollars. But Darby and uncle bankrupt, dusted in debt. But Darby did not give up. He learned the lesson he learned in his life, he said, only three feet. That's what he used to say. If only three feet. All of his life, he said, if only three feet I had dug. If only three feet I had dug. But then, he didn't dig in the ground. He became one of the most successful insurance sellers in the history of America. He sold millions of worth of insurance in a year and became so rich and famous. And he learned his lessons and if I could have dug only three feet. Sometime we give too soon too early. We become too tired. Jesus says to Peter, go a little further. Go a little deeper. Hang on. Go on. Don't give up so easily when going get stuff. Don't stop working for the things of God. Don't stop reading your Bible. Don't stop praying. Don't stop believing the promises of God just because life is so tough. Don't stop when things go bad. All of a sudden, keep on keeping on. And time will come. Your nets will be filled. Your boats will be filled. Your life 
will be fulfilled and you will become a man and a woman of astonishment but will you allow jesus to come into your life will you open your ears to listen what jesus is talking will you obey him when he says to you go a little further go a little deeper and will you be willing to say lord i don't know what is happening to me but because you said so i will do it Lord, I don't know how to go, but because you say so, I will go. Lord, I don't know how to give this, but because you say so, I will give it. Because you say so, I will do it. Let us think about that. Because you say so, I will do it. John Darby learned that lesson. Peter learned that lesson. Let us also learn that. in our life never give up too soon too early god still has a miracle waiting for us at the end of the dark tunnel let us pray.